for what other people want. This is what's going to save this country. People recognize the Ku Klux Klan. There's either one or two decisions about it. They either love it or they hate it. If they hate it, then that's fine by me. I don't care. Good evening, everyone. James Dolphin here with you. This is What Does the Bible Say? We have a special treat for you tonight. We are going to have a discussion with Mr. Eli James, who's a former Imperial Clud for the Ku Klux Klan, and we're going to be having some biblical discussions on our differences, what he believes about, uh, really, I guess, uh, the chosen people of God. I'll get into that in just a minute, but we want to get our contact information and remind you about our times. Uh, a Word from the Lord comes on uh, Thursday nights, 9 o'clock, and if you want to meet with us, two feet of the boulevard, be glad to have you. My number is 276-340-2653. Uh, of course, I want to remind you also of Religious Review that comes on Thursday nights at 10 p.m. following the news. And I was just discussing with Mr. James that maybe some Thursday night he can come back and uh, uh, we'll have the whole three and a half hours and uh, get a little more discussion in because it's hard to do the 10-minute segments. But I don't want to delay too much. I want to get right on into it so we have all the time we can. Uh, the order of our discussion tonight is that we're going to have three uh, ten-minute speeches each. Uh, Mr. James will go ten minutes, I'll go ten minutes, and so forth. We'll take up the first hour. Then we're going to open the phone lines up for calls. You can call in, ask me a question, ask Mr. James a question. Um, and then uh, we'll finish out the, our program. Uh, we'll close up. We'll give him a few more uh, minutes to make some closing remarks, and, uh, and then we'll sign off. So I hope you're ready for that. Uh, for this discussion. So I'm not going to take uh, any more of, of Eli's time. I'm going to let him uh, have the first 10 minutes. I think he's going to give a, maybe an introduction about some core beliefs that, that he has with the uh, Christian, identity. Christian Identity Movement. Is that That's right. Enough? All right. So Christian Identity Movement. Yes. And uh, so uh, I'm not going to take, delay anymore. So uh, Eli, right. uh, go ahead. Well, thank you, Mr. Oldfield. I'd I, I really like to thank you and the Church of Christ for having me on and uh, giving me the opportunity to express the opinions of uh, the Christian Identity Movement and the Ku Klux Klan. And I would just like to say offhand that the Christian Identity Movement is an in independent movement of Bible-believing Christians who, by, on their own, uh, have come to the conclusion that the Bible is about the white race and no other race. And uh, the other races are in simply incidental to the language of the Bible. Uh, but there is another group of people, namely called the Canaanites, who are later called the Edomites, and who we understand are the Jewish people today. And the Bible has nothing good to say about these people, that they are people who practice deception, who practice lawlessness, and who have been a thorn in the side of the true Christian people throughout history and, and that they have been pretending to be Israel for the last 2,000 years, okay? Now the Ku Klux Klan has had similar beliefs. They have, have always had a distaste for Jews, also for Catholics, and the reason for disliking Catholicism is because the Catholic Church has also practiced universalism and race mixing and those people who understand what the Catholic Church has been up to from the beginning is that the Catholic Church has been using religion to establish a worldwide empire and a religious empire but they've used force like the the Spanish and other uh, military troops the the uh, Holy Roman Empire used force to try to convert people to Catholicism and of course this is absolutely forbidden in scriptures no, the scriptures do not advocate or permit conversion by force and the types of things that were going on in the Holy Roman Empire for uh, almost 2,000 years. So, and we see that the Holy Roman Empire has been succeeded 
by the current Zionist empire that is actually using the same tactics, using fraud, deceit, uh, pretending to be something they're not in order to fool, deceive, and make white Christians follow them instead of Jesus Christ, okay? Now, I'm not saying that the other races can't practice Christianity. What I am saying is that we're, we can practice our own religion, but we must do it separately as individual races, okay? So, the, one of the crucial prophecies of the New Testament is 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and as we adjust the stand here, I'm going to quote this amazing prophecy by Paul in which he talks about true Israel falling away from the true faith of the scriptures. And here's how he says it. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together to him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that day of Christ is at hand, that is the second coming. Let no man deceive you. We are being warned not to be deceived. Do not allow yourself to be deceived by these people who pretend to be followers of Christ who, or who pretend to be related to Christ and are not and pretend to be Israel, for example. By any means, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. So the second coming will not occur until this falling away has taken, a pl has taken place among Christianity. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now who might that be? Who might that man of sin, the son of perdition, be? Well, the entire New Testament details, the struggles that Jesus Christ had with the scribes and Pharisees. These scribes and Pharisees were teaching a new doctrine, not the doctrine of Moses, not the doctrine of Christ. They hated Christ, and they're the ones who put him to death. Jesus told them, if you had believed Moses, you would believe me. But these scribes and Pharisees did not believe Moses. In Matthew chapter 23, he excoriates them tells them that they have destroyed the law and the prophets and created their own tradition, and that tradition is called Judaism today. Since we understand the Jewish people are not the Israel of the Bible and that they have created a new religion, not preserving the oracles of God, but perverting the oracles of God by creating their own tradition, which makes the law of Moses of none effect. That's what Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 23. So what are we doing following the traditions of these Judaizers, these Jews who have made up an entirely new religion which has nothing to do and which actually denies the validity of the scriptures? What are we doing engaging with these people who are in fact Christ haters? And every rabbi will tell you that Jesus Christ is not the Messiah they do not believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. And this idea, this denial of Christ, is what unifies Judaism and brings them against true Christianity. For example, in the Israeli state, you will be put in jail for five years if you try to evangelize a Jew. We have no such regulation here in America. You are free to speak your mind, and, and you can evangelize anyone you please. But in the state of Israel,